What's up everybody, it's LogicBomb82 here with the Minecraft Union. Today we're going to set up a dedicated Rust server. So this is for a Windows machine. First thing you need to do is download Steam CMD. You can just Google it, open your browser, type in Steam CMD all together. And it'll be the first link there. And we're going to download it for Windows. And right here's the download link. You just hit save as or save file and then once you have that downloaded you want to extract it I like to put it on my C drive um, you can put it wherever you want it doesn't really matter just know where you have it um, once you open where the, the folder that it's in you'll see it you'll see a single file called steam cmd this is only if you haven't done this already if you already have steam cmd then you don't have to worry about this so once you do that you're going to want to run this it's going to download a bunch of files and it's going to fill in your folder to look like this, which is perfect. Once that's done, type in login space anonymous, hit enter, and then you're going to type in app underscore update. And the number for um, Rust dedicated server is 2585550. And then hit enter. It's going to download all the files. I've already done this, but um, if you haven't, it will take it a little while depending on your network speed to get it downloaded. Once you have that done, just hit exit. And now you're going to have a Steam Apps folder, and inside that, there's common, and then you should see Rust dedicated server here. That's what you want. It looks like it's five five and a half gigs, so it may take a little bit to download if you don't have it already. And then there's what you want. So now what you want to do though is you want to go right here and right click in that folder and hit new text document and I'm going to name it rust start just like that you need to get rid of the dot text and make it a dot bat for bat and hit enter it's going to ask you if you want to do this to say yes if you can't change the file or name you need to go up here to view and then Put a check mark here where it says file name extensions and then you'll be able to change it like that so that's what you would do so now you're going to want to open this i recommend note plus plus notepad plus plus it's free to download if not you can just use regular notepad so first thing you want to type in is rust dedicated dot exe and then you want a space and then a dash and then batch mode that makes it run um, a dedicated server without a, a console interface and then you want to hit space and plus and then you want to go server dot port and this is you can assign this to any port you want just make sure whatever port you put here is open in your firewall or your router so people can connect to your server so we're gonna make ours 27015 which is very common for Steam games. Whoops, I didn't put a space in there. there go. Next, you want a space and then another plus, and then you want server level, server dot level, and then space. And you can put a couple different things here. Um, if you want one of the default maps, you can put it in here. We're going to pr put procedural so it generates it for us, and then space map on or another that and then space plus now we're going to put in server seed server dot seed and then this can be any number this is just how the world generates so it just makes it different if you want to make the same world on a bunch of different servers you put the same numbers in here um so we're just going to do uh let's see seven eight five just for kicks, there we go. And then you want space plus server dot world size. Now this is determines how big the world is. The bigger it is, the more resources it's going to use. So I wouldn't make a huge world unless you have a pretty powerful server to run this on. Um, the value has to be between 1,000 and 6,000. 1,000 is the smallest, 6,000 is the largest. We're going to make ours 3,500. Nah, let's make it let's make it 4500 I think our server can handle it we'll see how it's doing here so we'll make our 4500 
Okay, and then you want to put space, another plus, put server dot max players. This is how many you want to allow on the server at once. And this is gonna also use more resources and everything. So let's put ten and then space plus, and then you're gonna put in server dot host name. This is the name of the server that's shown on um the server list. So let's put Minecraft Union. And then you want to put a plus server dot description. This is gonna be for noobs. I had never actually played this game, um, so I'm gonna make the server public. So if anybody's wanting to find a new server to play on, you're more than welcome to join. So visit minecraftunion.com. Okay. Oh, I don't. Oh, hold on, I didn't put that in. There we go. Oh, wait, hold on, I need this whole thing. Oops. Oh, I did, I did put it. Okay, there we go. Alright. Uh, you can also put a header image in. Um, I don't have one ready, so I'm not going to do it. But what you do is you just do a, a plus server dot header image and then the link to it. So, you know, whatever you're, wherever you're hosting your server image for. But I don't have that ready yet, so. Um, that's the main ones. You can also do um, uh, an Archon port and an Archon password. But I'm not gonna set any of that up. One other thing I wanna touch on real quick that I skipped initially is you cannot put a password on the server, but you can whitelist it for a Steam group only. So only people in that Steam group will be able to join it. And to do that, you just put in the command in your dot bat, the plus server dot Steam group, and then put your Steam group number in there. Um, your Steam group number can be found if you if you Google how to find your Steam group ID number, you'll figure it out. It's not that hard. So that is how you can put a password on your server. I just wanted to include that because a lot of people usually like to put a password on the server when it's private. So. I think that's all we need to do here. So we're going to do file save. And let's run it and see if it starts up our server for us. So after it fully loads, and it will take a while the first time you load it, because um, it has to generate everything, it's going to look something like this. And you want to look for this bottom line here that shows the how many people is on the server and how much room it has, the name of the server you made, and then the map style. So once you have this up and it'll show that it's actually running, then you know the server's good, you should be able to join it. Again, be patient, it will take a while. So that's what you're looking for. Once that's done, you're good to go. Your server's up and running. Um, people, as long as you have the port open um, on your firewall or router, people from external, externally should be able to connect, no problem. So thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. It helps me grow my channel. Uh, have a great day, and don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, please post them. I will try to help you out the best that I can. Thanks, everybody.